Hi, I'm Dorothea Pio, and I'm going to be talking to you about how ecosystems support our lives here on Earth. So what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is a dynamic complex of living things, including animals, plants, and microorganisms, and their non-living environment, including air, water, and soils. And all of these things together function as one interactive unit. Human beings are also part of ecosystems, and like all other living things, affect ecosystems and their processes, but are also highly dependent on them for survival. Ecosystems can be relatively undisturbed like primary forests or highly modified and managed like agricultural landscapes and plantation forests. Ecosystems can vary in size too. They can be tiny or vast, but what's important is that they function as one unit. Examples of ecosystems include wetlands, grasslands, temperate forests, tropical forests and agricultural landscapes. So why are ecosystems just so crucial for us? Well, essentially because they provide us with all the goods and services that we need to survive on Earth. For example, forests and woodlands provide us with food, timber, natural medicine, and they regulate our climate. Coastal ecosystems also provide us with food sources and natural defense against extreme weather events such as floods and tsunamis. Freshwater ecosystems, like rivers and lakes, provide us with water for drinking and bathing. All of these attributes, which make life on Earth both possible and worth living, are called ecosystem services. What we should remember when we're talking about ecosystem services, we're talking about a human-centered or human-focused concept. While ecosystems are, of course, important in their own right, when we're talking about ecosystem services, we're thinking about their role in supporting human well-being. We usually talk about four main groups of ecosystem services. In the first group, provisioning services are all of those products that we harvest more or less directly from nature. There is a vast range of food products we get from plants, animals and microbes, including wild and cultivated products such as fish, meat, corn, wheat, nuts, berries and honey. Provisioning services also include natural medicine, genetic resources and biochemicals which are all so important for a pharmaceutical industry and for animal and plant breeding. The second group is regulating services. These are all of those services that contribute to human well-being by regulating the processes that underpin ecosystems. Hazard regulation is an example of regulating services. Extreme floods may be reduced by ecosystems. Mangroves, for example, can be really effective buffers against sea level changes that may be brought on by tsunamis or floods. Pollination is another regulating service. Approximately 80% of all flowering plants are pollinated by animals and mostly insects but also birds and mammals. Climate regulation, both global and local, is another really important regulating service that ecosystems provide. About 289 gigatons of carbon are absorbed by forests every year. This has a huge impact on temperature and precipitation worldwide, but also at a local level. The third group, supporting services, provides the basic infrastructure to life. So what exactly does that mean? Well, for example, the creation or production of new living material is called primary production and is one of these supporting services. Algae, for example, will take nutrients and sunlight and through a process called photosynthesis, produce oxygen, which is fundamental to the survival of most organisms living on the Earth. Another example of supporting services is nutrient recycling. The breaking down of organic matter in our soils is what contributes to soil fertility and allows us to grow so many crops. The fourth group, or cultural services, are those non-material benefits which we receive from nature. These include recreation and tourism, research and education, and aesthetics. 
Pleasure may be associated with the beauty of a landscape, a concept that varies greatly between cultures, but is present in almost every culture and is very highly valued. Nature can provide positive benefits for our health, both mental and physical. In many cultures, specific sites, landscape features and species become really important cultural references and are very highly valued. So by now you should have a good understanding of the varied and many ways that ecosystems contribute to human well-being. So are ecosystems changing or stable? To a certain extent, ecosystems change all the time, but over the past 50 to 100 years, ecosystems have really changed a lot, and this is mainly due to human activities. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment demonstrated the importance of ecosystem values and services to human well-being, and also showed that many of these ecosystem services are being degraded or lost. Ongoing and widespread decline in biodiversity and ecosystems has led to significant changes in ecosystem services, raising concerns about their capability to continue to sustain human well-being and economic development in the long term. Next, put what you've learnt into practice with a quick learning check. And in the next video, you will hear more about how we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction.